Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Um, I would like to continue talking about the Newton uh, Leibniz formula for integrating, uh, for getting the value of uh, definite integrals. Um, today I will just talk about a couple of examples. Now, this lecture is part of the course of Advanced Mathematics for um, teenagers and high school students. It's presented on unizor.com. I suggest you to watch this lecture from that website because every lecture has very detailed notes and uh, some lectures or some topics rather have exams so you can just take exam and the site is completely free so first of all let me just uh, remind you formula uh, uh, newton Leibniz formula so if you want to uh, find the value of definite integral of function f of x from on the, on the segment from a to b which you can always consider as an area under curve, which represents the graph of function. Now, this is equal to where capital F is um, any uh, indefinite integral or antiderivative from the function lowercase f. Okay, so I have derived this formula uh, in the previous lecture. And today I'm going to use it for a couple of concrete examples. I start with examples which I was using before when I introduced the concept of um, def uh, definite integrals as a limit of Riemann sums, if you remember. We divided the segment into little pieces, uh, into n pieces, and uh, had this uh, sum well, let me just remind you, limit sum of f of x i delta x i from 1 to n, where n goes to infinity and delta x goes to 0. So we have divided our uh, segment a, b into n parts, and then we can calculate this expression and go to the limit, and that's where I was actually using two particular examples to derive basically the value of um, definite integral. Now, I will do exactly the same two examples and a couple of more, but these two examples I will use to demonstrate how easy it is to use this Newton-Leibniz formula to calculate versus whatever I was doing before when I did really um, according to the definition of definite integral. So I really divided the segment into n pieces, calculated the sum, and then um, uh, uh, took the limit as the number of uh, intervals goes to infinity. Okay, so let me just do these couple of examples. First, I have a function, f of x is 10x, and uh, the segment is 0, 4. So basically it's this. So this is 4, this is 40, and this is 10x. And we need the area under this uh, graph. And obviously I know that we all know geometry, this is a triangle, we can always calculate the area of triangle is 4 times 40, which is 160, divided by 2, it's 80. Yes, we know that. But in any case, I would like to use integral to calculate this area. Now, again, before, when I was doing it this way, I divided this into n pieces, calculated the sum, went to a limit, and got the same 80, obviously. But now I will do it easier. I will just do this... Uh, uh, Newton Leibniz formula. Now, first of all, what is um, indefinite integral of 10, 10, 10x? Well, obviously, this is 5x squared. Well, I will not use the plus c because I will have this difference, and c will c and minus c will obviously uh, cancel out. So this is um, indefinite integral from 10x. Why? Because the derivative of this is, what, 5 times derivative of x squared. Derivative of x squared is 2 and x to the uh, power of 1, so it's 2x. 
So it's 5 times 2 times x, which is 10x. So my integral from 0 to 4, 10x dx equals to 5x squared, which is 4 squared minus 5 uh, 0 squared. Right? So this is function, 5x squared. I just substitute the upper limit of integration and lower limit, which is equal to, this is 16 times 580. You see how easy it is and how fast? All you have to know is this. So if, if, if the function is, well, relatively known, simple, whatever else, and we can really come up with indefinite integral with entry derivative of the function, so the function derivative of which will be equal to our function f, lowercase f. Then the whole thing is really easy. Next problem. Now this is another example from the lecture where I was using this approach. And again, it was really kind of difficult. But anyway, this is what? Uh, from minus 1 to 1. So it's this. It's a piece of parabola. And we had to calculate the area under parabola. Now our answer, I do remember it, it was, I think it was 4 thirds, four, four third, this area. Okay, now this is a simple function, just a power function, and we know how easy it is to, uh, to have an indefinite integral from, from this. Indefinite integral from minus x squared will be minus uh, x cubed divided by 3, right? Minus will give you this. Derivative of x cubed would be 3x squared, it will, 3 will cancel with this, so it will be only x squared. Now, I have to put plus x because derivative of x is 1, and that would give me 1, right? So this is my indefinite integral. And all I have to do is substitute 1 and minus 1 into this formula to get the answer, right? So the integral is equal to function of 1. It's minus 1 third plus 1, right? Minus function f of minus 1. Well, let me open parentheses here. Okay, so I have to put minus minus 1 cubed divided by 3 um, plus minus 1, right? If I substitute minus 1, that's what I will have. Oh, God. <laughs> so what is this? This is minus 1. And this minus, it will be plus 1. So it's 1 third minus 1. And this is minus in front of it. And I have minus, minus 1 third plus 1. So, if I will open the parentheses, it will be minus one-third plus one, minus one-third plus one, which is equal to uh, two minus two-thirds, right? Which is six-thirds minus two, which is four-thirds. Right, exactly the same thing as I wanted to get. Again, what was the most difficult part of this problem? To find the uh, indefinite integral, to find antiderivative. But it's not really very difficult if the function is so simple. And then I have a couple of other problems which are not related to um, the previously solved problems, so I don't really have any kind of answer which I have to match, but 
they are very interesting, I would say, because they have some physical sense. So, the problem number three is, there is a car which is moving with this speed. At some point, it starts slowing down to zero. So the driver uh, hits the brakes. Now, after 10 seconds, the car stops. Now, it's given that every second the car is losing the same um, part of the speed. So the speed is going from 20 to 0 linearly. It's, uh, it, it, it's absolutely linearly um, uh, slowing down. So I didn't really specify even the function, right? And um, what's necessary to determine is the distance which car uh, actually went from this speed to a complete stop if it took 10 seconds. So my first uh, part of the problem is basically uh, put it into language of mathematics, right? So, if the car is losing its speed gradually, equally every second, from 20 to 0, and it took 10 seconds, it means that my um, function, which describes speed, well, let's use d. Usually, in physics, we are using v or t is equal to 20 minus 10 t, right? When t is equal to 0, I am at 20. When t is equal to 10, okay, I made a mistake. That's 2. Um, so when t is equal to 10 seconds, it would be 20 minus 20, which is 0, and the function is linear which basically gives us um, what we wanted to have as, as, as a gradual um, diminishing of the speed, uh, equal uh, part of the speed is lost on, on each unit of time. Okay, that's, that's, that's given. So we have the speed as the function of time. Now, what is the distance? Now, you remember that if the speed is constant and the time is whatever it is, then the distance would be multiplication of speed times time, right? But that's only if V is constant. What if V is changing? It means that the first second the car will go uh, uh, longer than during the second second because the speed goes down, down, down. And at the very end, the car during the last second will cover a very small distance because the speed will be very small. Now, how to transfer it into integrals? Okay, here the definition of the integral actually helps because I will do exactly the same as I was doing during the um, area under curve calculations to come up with the concept of the integral. So basically, I would like you to uh, understand the following. We come up with some kind of an integral as a formula which represents the answer to our problem using the definition of the integral as a limit of certain sums, etc. But then we calculate this integral using the Newton's uh, Newton Leibniz formula. So again, we are using the definition to formulate our problem mathematically. But then we are using the Newton Leibniz formula to calculate the real value of this integral. So, how can I approach this um, uh, and, and get the integral actually, which represents this, uh, this distance? Well, very simply. Let's just divide this into n pieces. Now, during a certain interval of time, we assume that the speed is not really changing significantly. So, 
if this is delta ti, if I will consider the speed to be vi and this particular interval, then this is the distance covered during this small interval. Then I have to summarize them and then I have to limit as number of intervals goes to infinity and each interval shrinks to zero, right? So that's basically a definition of the integral. Now, what is vi? Well, vi is the speed on the i's interval, right? So I know if my i is actually the number of seconds, so I can basically say that vi is equal to uh, the formula, basically, 20 minus ti, right, uh, times 2. So I have a formula now that this is my v as a function of the time, and this gives me as a limit integral from 0 to 10 seconds my speed which is 20 minus 2t dt. So delta t is converted into dt and vi is basically the function which represents my, my speed. So we have mathematically expressed um, the distance which, we, which the car covers during this period of time. Now all we need to do is let's forget about this preamble and let's just calculate it. So what is this? Now f of t which is indefinite integral of this is equal to how to get 20 I have to put 20t. How to get 2t it's derivative of t squared so it's minus t squared. So that's my formula for indefinite integral, for antiderivative. And so I, all I have to do is to put uh, limits of integration. So for 10, it would be 20 times 10 minus 10 squared. And for 0, it would be minus 20 times 0 plus 0 squared. This is 0, this is 0, this is 100, this is 200. So the answer is 100 meters and that's how long this car from 20 meters per second per second will cover until zero uh, speed if the time it took is 10 seconds Now, obviously, it's assumed that in this particular case, the driver slows down uh, gradually uh, and equally on every uh, period of time. So the amount of speed which I is lost during the time t is proportional to time t. So the first second it will lose 2, the second second it will lose 2 meters per second, so it will be on the first second it will be, after first second it will be, from 20 it will go down to 18, then to 16, then to 14, etc. after each second. Okay. And my last problem is related to spring. This is the spring in its initial position. Now, if I would like to extend it I have to basically have some force which is pulling this spring, right? And uh, there is a Hooke's law which says something like this, where F is um, the force, K is some kind of a coefficient which depends on the spring, different springs have different coefficients, but it's just a constant which defines the spring. And X means extension of the, sp uh, of the spring. So if you would like to extend it a little bit, then it's proportional to uh, 
amount you would like to extend. So if you would like to extend it by, I don't know, like, let's say by, by one centimeter, it's one force. If it's by 10 centimeters, it's 10 times greater force. Now, obviously it's not absolute, but in certain uh, approximation, it, it, it's the right law. So we assume that this is the law. All right? Now, uh, my question is, let's just assume that k is equal to 0 0.5. Again, it's a characteristic of the spring. doesn't really matter. Some kind of a constant. And I would like to uh, extend this spring by 1.1 meter. So, from x equal to 0 to x equals to 0 0.1 meter. I would like to extend it by this particular um, period. Now, what's interesting about this? In the beginning, when I'm extending only by uh, one millimeter, for instance, my force should be very, very um, weak, right? Because I'm just a little bit extending. And the more I'm extending, the next one millimeter would be more and more difficult because the spring requires uh, this type of force to hold it, let's say, at point um, I don't know, at point one millimeter, it's one force, but at point ten millimeters, it's ten times greater force, right? Well, considering that the length would be ten times more. So, my um, force is changing. Now, my task is to determine amount of work which I have to extend to, uh, to extend the spring. I have to make this type of work, all right? So, this amount of work I have to calculate. Now, what is work? Well, if you remember your physics course, work is, if you have some kind of a force which is applied uh, uh, on the distance s, it's just the multiplication. So, if you have force of I don't know, one newton on one meter, the uh, work will be one newton times one meter which in physics is called a joule. joule. Uh, that's unit of work. But again, that's in case f is exactly the same during entire distance s. Here, it's different, because in the beginning, force is very small. At the end, force is bigger. So, that's definitely an invitation for using integrals. So, how can we use the integrals? Well, very simple, the same thing. We divide this into n pieces. And what can I say about work which is supposed to be um, produced uh, on the ith interval? Well, it's equal to ith force times delta xi. Now, what is ith force? This is the force which is extending a uh, spring by xi, right? So this is equal to kxi. Because, you know, the force is proportional to uh, extension of the spring. So this would be my xi. This little piece would be delta xi. And I assume that the force is not changing significantly from this to this, which means that I can use this formula for one individual amount of work which is supposed to be um, performed uh, during this i interval. Now I have to uh, summarize it together and I have to limit as n goes to infinity. Same thing and we have integral here obviously. So we have integral from 0 to What's my maximum extension? 0 0.1. Now, this is kx dx. Right? 
Well, k actually, I know it's 0 0.5. So here is the integral, which represents amount of work which we are supposed to perform to extend the spring. Now, um, what is this? How can I get x? x is one half of x squared derivative, right? So we have 0 0.5, then um, again x squared divided by 2, and that would be from 0 0.1, so I have to put 0 0.1 here, square, uh, minus 0 0.5, 0 squared divided by 2, because the lower limit is 0. So this is 0, this is 1 hundredths, uh, and this is 0 0.25, 0 0.0025, right? So that's my answer. Um, I think this is the unit. That's how it's spelled, spelled I believe. I'm not sure. Joe, that's um, in, in the standard um, physics, we are using certain standard system of units. The force will be in newtons, for instance. The distance will be in meters. Amount of work will be in newton meters, which is, by definition, a joule. In any case, that's the physics part of it, which might actually come handy in, in the future. In any case, I wanted to present you a few problems with one very important purpose. To state the problem mathematically, you need the definition of the uh, integral as limit of the sum of individual uh, pieces, which are multiplication of the value of the function times increment of the argument to formulate once it's formulated once you have obtained the integral then the formula newton leibniz formula is extremely handy and it gives you the answer almost immediately provided you know how to get the indefinite integral uh, and the derivative of the function lowercase f like in this case, or actually all cases which I was considering were related to power functions. And for power functions, um, indefinite integral is very simple. So basically, um, let me think. Well, basically that's all I wanted to present um, for you today. Um, important are two things. Number one, you have to be able using um, your knowledge about the problem, uh, you have to be able to express it in terms of integral. And the second thing, you have to remember this very simple formula, uh, Newton-Leibniz formula, which obviously can be used in case you know what's the indefinite integral from the function which you are integrating. Okay, that's it. I recommend you to read the notes for this lecture. The notes are on unizor.com, right next to the lecture. Um, and uh, maybe you should actually do yourself these problems. Uh, notes actually present the problem and solution, but don't pay attention to um, a solution for a while. Try to do it yourself. That would be very helpful. Okay, that's it. Thanks very much and good luck. <laughs>